everybody, my name is Kylie Martin and today I'm going to be talking to you about dairy cattle and the judgment of dairy cattle so that we can make sure that we are having proper and healthy cows on our farms. I was actually able to compete at the national level for dairy cattle evaluation back in 2016 and so these are all things I learned on my journey. The most important thing when we're looking at a dairy cow is their udder. We want to make sure that their udder is large and capacious, but it's not too large and capacious that it's hanging down below the hock. The hock is a good placement so that it can tell us whether or not uh, the udder is too full. If the udder is too full, it'll cause a lot of health problems to our dairy cows and we want to avoid that at all costs. When we're looking at the dairy cow, we want to look at the depth. We want to make sure that we have a nice solid line on the back of the cow. Um, when we're looking from the rear end so that we can make sure we have good venous structure. Good venous structure also appears throughout the udder. Looking throughout the udder and we see those big strong veins, that means we have really good milk flow down to those ducts and into the teats. Teat placement's a huge thing. We wanna make sure that our teats are perpendicular to the ground and we wanna make sure that the teat placement never goes off to the side. It's always straight up and down. That makes sure that we have no pinched milk ducts, that they're all straight and we get good milk flow out of the cattle. I included some pictures here. This is a really good uh, view of the back of a dairy cattle. Um, you can see there she has a really solid line. Her teat placement's pretty good. One of them looks a little off, but not too bad. The next picture, um, that is just one that has really good venous structure. She has really good strong veins. Teat placement looks really great right in those squares on the udders, which is what we want. Um, also, I included a bad picture. We can see here that this cow would not be good for um, producing milk or even really for breeding. You can tell she might have just came out of a gestational period, um, about a year, maybe two years. Um, she is really, really sinking in udder. You can't see any venous structure at all. Teats are really wrinkled, um, not strong teat at all. Um, from the back, you'd be able to tell that there is no crease, just you can tell from the side if you've looked at a lot of dairy cattle. What else is there? Um, we have the strength and the frame of the cattle. So when we're looking at a cow, we want a nice, strong, solid back line of the cow. We want to make sure we have high hips. High hips are good for breeding. If our hips are low, um, that can cause a big problem during childbirth. Cattle can actually have a problem and not be able to push the cow out because their hip bones are in the way. And so a lot of um, dairy cattle will end up actually passing away during their uh, labor. We wanna make sure that we have a nice, long, strong neck. The neck is also in line with that back, so we're not making sure that there's not a divot down and then there's a neck. Um, nice, strong, long neck. And then rib spread with dairy cattle, they're actually pretty skinny. We don't want a fat cow when it comes to our dairy cattle. We wanna make sure that they're skinny and that their whole bodies are devoted to milk production, not for meat production. Um, those would be more of Angus cows, which we raise for meat production, not like the Holsteins um, or any of the other cows. We just wanna make sure that we're there for their milk production. Um, chest, we want a nice high chest, nice high chest bones um, and then the skin we want nice loose skin loose skin determines that the cow is skinny and so it keeps it really nice and healthy the rump we want like I said nice high rear uh, hip bones um, breed characteristics make sure they're following along the breeds um, obviously the whole scenes are gonna look a lot different um, than an Angus or it's gonna look a lot different than any other cow breed and so um, that they're following along characteristics of their breed. The first picture there is the picture of a Holstein. That would be considered your ideal cow. That's about as perfect as a cow you can get. You can see she has nice, good venous structure, perfect teat placement. Um, she has a nice, long udder sac. Um, back is straight, her high hip bones. She's also got some good ribs, rib placement. So um, that's a really perfect cow. The next cow is, she's got a big udder, but she's got really small teats, which would not be good for milk production. Also, she's pretty fat, so that would not be good for milk production either. She might be good for as a, a meat cow, but as far as a dairy cow, she would not be considered very great. Um, she does have a good, strong back line and um, high hip bones, but not very good for dairy cattle. The next one, I put a very malnourished cow on there. You can tell she has 
She has a pretty full udder, but her T platements are not perpendicular to the ground. They're really off. You can also tell that her neck divots down. She has a really weak bone structure. She does not have a strong um, spine and her head hangs low. Also, you can tell that her hooks and her hooves are also really malnourished out. They haven't been trimmed and so it causes a lot of health problems to the cow. There's more. <laughs> Another thing we look for in dairy cattle is their rear feet and their movement. Um, at the end stage of judging your cows, they're gonna walk them around the arena and make sure that you're watching how they're moving. If there's a lot of swaying in those back hips, you know that the cow doesn't have steady bones. And so how we can determine that, just looking at them without making them walk, is their hook and their hooves. So the hook is the knee of a cow. So if we're looking at the hook and it's off line of the hoof, we know that they are actually gonna sway a lot. Same with their hip. If you know that the hook is way off from the hip bone, way wide, way narrow, um, it's actually gonna cause a lot of problems for the cow um, when it comes to milk production, comes to their gestational periods. It's gonna be a big, big, big difference. Next to it though, we have a really ideal cow um, the hook and the hooves are pretty in line. There's a little off balance, not too much at all. Um, and it actually does go really well up into the hip bone. So that's a really, really good Holstein. Have you heard the song Sway? <laughs> you make me wanna sway. We don't want them to sway. No, no swaying. Um, a little bit about judging dairy cattle. Judging dairy cattle is a comparative evaluation of cattle in which animals are ranked based on their closeness to the ideal dairy confirmation, making sure that we want the ideal cow when it comes to our farms. Um, that comes right off the USDA um, website. Next is uh, I put a, a definition of when we're talking about our dairy cattle, we wanna make sure that we're using educated words. So I don't wanna say she has a big udder. Yeah, that looked like good back. We want to make sure that we're really talking about it. So she's got a large, capacious udder. She's got a nice, strong back line, nice high hip bones. Hooks and hooves are in line. She's got good teat placement. Um, all of that comes off the HolsteinFoundation.org. You can find all of those really great terms there. And then another one is um, UGA um, University. Um, their, their extension, they just gave another example. So. You know, they have a stronger, firmer attachment when viewing from the side. That's talking about the udder. The udder attaches, it's not a ball, and then it attaches, it has a nice line on the cow. That is it. That is all I have for you. Um, thank you for listening in on my speech, and keep calm and love dairy cows. <laughs> thank you.